Stance width, it's one of the biggest points of confusion for a lot of players. They're not sure how wide to stand relative to the iron that they're using. If this is something that you've been pondering, well, stay tuned. This video is really gonna help. Let's get stuck in. Thanks for tuning in guys, Kerry Gray here in the studio today at Joondalup Resort. In this video, we're talking all about stance width. It's a common question I get, and I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions around there, around what you should do exactly with your stance relative to the iron that you are using. Now, we're not really gonna to talk too much about woods today, pertaining specifically to irons, and I'm just gonna give you a real simple template that you can follow, but I will touch on those woods a little bit later on in the video. But before we get in, uh, if you want to get a little bit more personalized in your golf coaching, your swing analysis, well, I can do online swing analysis. I've also got a premium video library over on KG Golf. So if you're interested in that, you can head on over there. And also please go down below, click subscribe, click that bell if you haven't already, just so you get notified whenever I release a video. Make sure you click that bell for me. And also if you do really enjoy my content, well, please put a like in there. Please share it with your friends. It's just gonna help me grow the channel, get me ranking a little bit higher, and then get the message out here about helping you guys improve your game even more. But on to today's session talking all about stance width. Should we stand narrow? Should we stand wide? What's the ultimate width of stance? Where should we position that ball? It's certainly something that I get asked a lot and I'm going to break that down for you. Now let's first of all talk about the differences between if you stand too narrow and too wide and then we can kind of talk about and compartmentalize why it would be more important to find that optimal balance point for you as an individual. Well, the first thing is, if I stand too narrow, and what we're gonna look for here is just in regards to the distance between the center line of my ankles. Now, before we talk about that, we're just gonna talk about foot flare. Uh, it is important to flare your feet. And the main reason being is that helps facilitate balance and rotation and speed. It's not the topic of today's session. When we were talking about this, always make sure that you are considering adding a bit of flair to that stance. I like to see about 30 degrees of flair with your left foot for the right hander and about 15 degrees with your right. But onto the actual topic, which is stance width. So we're just going to pertain specifically to the distance between the center of our ankles here. Okay, so what would be a limitation if I stood too narrow with my stance. Well, that would help facilitate rotation, which is great, but unfortunately what happens is when you start to create more and more speed, it makes it very challenging to maintain your balance throughout the entirety of the motion. Obviously, that's something what we wanna do. We don't wanna be halfway through the swing and your body forgets that it's swinging the golf club because it's too concerned about keeping you upright. So ensuring that you're standing wide enough where you're not gonna lose your balance is important. Now, when we do stand narrow, effectively what happens is we create this nice big turn. It's actually very easy to over rotate certain parts of your body, be it your hips or your shoulders. And it just really inhibits your ability to create a better sequence between the body, the arms and the club. Well, what happens when we stand too wide? Well, it's pretty much the opposite. When we stand too wide, what that does is that hinders our ability to turn. What that does is that locks up that lower body. We're generally gonna see that players would slide and effectively what's gonna happen as a result is it's gonna make it very challenging to create a consistent bottom to the golf swing. And that's what golf is all about. And the number one fundamental of golf is creating a consistent bottom and strike on that golf ball. And effectively, if I'm standing too wide, it's too easy to shift the mass of my body to my right foot, to my left foot, therefore just creating some inconsistency with the control over the bottom of that swing. So on top of that, well, what is the optimal stance width? And this is a great template that you can follow. What we would like to see in the address position, if you just get nice and comfortable, a little bit of bounce in those knees, a bit of foot flare like we were just discussing before. If you just get this golf club here, if you just dangle it from your armpits, what you wanna see is as that drops down, from this angle right here, you can see that's almost going through the center line of my ankles. If I do that from my other foot as well, you can see it very much so does the same thing. Now the foot flare, that provides a little bit more balance, that provides the ability to rotate 
to shift our pressure better. But the stance with itself is very important to ensure your body as a whole stays in balance throughout. Once again, too narrow, well that can cause me to lose a little bit of balance. I'm not gonna be as stable. Too wide, that inhibits my ability to turn, which creates speed and power and sequence as well. So when we are setting up a great little checkpoint, you can simply just get a golf club, dangle it from your armpits, drop that down, you can go bang, bang. Well, that looks like it's falling directly in line with my ankles. And that's a great little reference for you to use when you're down at the range. Now, alternatively, there are people that put little marks on their irons here, so they might just get a permanent marker, put a little line there, and then they use that as a reference for their stance with. And what we're talking about here is really with your seven iron. Now, how wide do you stand when you get a longer iron? How wide do you stand when you get a shorter iron? Well, if that's a baseline reference for a seven iron stance, ankles underneath armpits with your toes flared out, what you'll find is when you get a shorter club, if we were using this line down on the ground here as a reference of our ball position, you can check out some of my other videos in regards to that, but we like to see a comfortable club head distance inside the lead foot. The narrower we stand, well, we're just gonna bring that back foot in a little bit. Now you can see we're not really changing the association between our front foot and the ball position, but when I narrow in that back foot, and we're talking incremental differences, okay? So there's not a huge difference between a seven iron and a pitching wedge. There's not a huge difference between a seven iron and a four iron. Just a little bit narrower for those shorter irons to ensure that we're a little bit more on top of the golf ball. It's gonna help us give us more of a downward strike to get that sort of contact that we're looking for for the short clubs. And with the longer iron, well, we're gonna stand a little bit wider because the club's a little bit longer, we swing a little bit faster, and we need to maintain our balance as we create more speed. But it's also one of those things that you'll find if you simply just go through the process of ensuring that your stock seven iron setup is your ankles underneath your armpits, and then when you get set up from there, you just get comfortable relative to the club that you're using, you'll probably find that your pitching wedge, you narrow up a little bit. Your four iron, you widen up a little bit, and that will give you a great baseline of where to go from there. I wouldn't overthink it too much at the end of the day. If your stance with nearly every club when the ball's on the ground, uh, you stand about the same width the parts, so your ankles underneath your armpits with your toes flared out, well, that's gonna be good enough for really nearly every shot that you hit. That'll give you a good baseline that you can then follow on from there as you then move through the clubs. Now, once again, just reiterating the ball position, when you do change your stance, let's say that we've got a shorter club, be careful not to keep that stance the same width and move it back. That's really gonna change your angle of attack too much. And we like to create a consistent low point to the golf swing, or which when the golf club reaches its very bottom of the arc where the lead arm and the club shaft is aligned, well, regardless of what club you're gonna use, that's relatively gonna fall in the same spot. So if you start changing around your ball position too much, rather than your stance width, that starts to chop and change the angle of delivery of the golf club, and you'll find you'll get a little bit more inconsistent contact. So great reference, put a stick down here. This is what I like to practice. This is something that I prescribe to a lot of players. Comfortable club head inside that lead foot, bit of foot flare. From there, just ensure that you're trying to get your ankles underneath your armpits. That will provide you with a very solid, stable base, making it a lot easier to get that quality, consistent contact that you might be looking for. So if you're struggling with your ball position and your stance width, you're not quite sure how to stand, where to position it for those different clubs, we'll try this out and I'm sure it will help a lot increase the consistency of that ball striking. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you've got any questions at all, well, please ask me below. But until next time, I'm Kerry Gray. Thanks for watching.